Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary and in this video we're going to be talking about ruin theory. So, to prevent ruin, people buy insurance. They pay the insurer a premium and the insurer takes on the risk. Now, if the risk is realized and the insurer cannot pay, then the insurer is ruined. Therefore, capital reserves need to be calculated to cover these risks. If the reserves are too low, the probability of ruin will be too high. And if the reserves are too high, then shareholders will get a poor return. They'll probably withdraw their capital and the insurer will close down. So it's very important that we can calculate an accurate amount of capital needed to both prevent ruin and give shareholders a very good return. And that's what the benefit is of the ruin theory model. It helps us calculate how much initial capital we need. You know, what is the lowest amount of capital needed given a probability of ruin that is acceptable by the shareholders. And what we can also use ruin theory for is it can help us to see the impact various premium pricing strategies will have on ruin. As we know, higher premiums could reduce the probability of ruin, but we want to be careful because that might result in less policy holders. Now let's visually see what ruin theory looks like. So we've got this following graph where U is our initial capital and it's given in this graph by the blue. A very, very important parameter as well is duration and that is given on our x-axis. So on our x-axis we have time and on our y-axis we have our capital or our reserves and U is going to be the initial amount. We then have our premiums, which we assume that we're receiving continuously. So some people are paying today, some people are paying tomorrow, and we're getting this continuous stream of premiums, and the premiums are going to increase our capital position. However, every now and again, there is going to be a random loss amount, and that is given by these red bars, and they decrease our capital position. Now, if our capital position reaches zero or some sort of solvency line set by the regulator, then we say that ruin has occurred. So in this graph, we can see at time three, which I've circled in pink, this is where ruin has occurred. Now let's look at the mathematics. So with ruin theory, what we have is the following. We've got this function that has got two parameters. Uh, that U, remember I said that is our initial capital, and T is time. And what this is essentially saying, it's the probability that the capital goes below zero for some given time period and it is equal to alpha. So alpha will be our probability of ruin. So here we see U is the initial capital, T is time, and alpha is the probability of ruin. We then have capital, remember that was the blue bar in our picture, and it is given by the following. So our capital is fluctuating with time and we see that it is equal to uh, U, which is the initial capital, and it's going to then increase with CT, which is our premiums. So C are going to be the premiums multiplied by time, so that's where the CT is coming from. And then the S of T is going to be the total claims at time T. And total claims, this is given by the compound uh, distribution, where we have you know, the sum of all of these x's. So here we see xi is the size of the ith claim, and how many of them? Well, that's also given by a random number, because we do not know how many claims are going to occur over a given time period, but we can model it with another distribution. So n of t is going to be the number of claims at time t. So again, like I said, this is the mathematics, and then we also have, have the graph. Now, a lovely exam question is, well, okay, how do we reduce ruin? Well, not only just an exam question, but I guess a discussion that is had at the, the various board meetings and in management's offices. So, of course, we can reduce ruin by increasing our initial capital and increasing the amount of premiums we receive. We can also reduce ruin by decreasing the duration, because remember, the probability of us being ruined in one day is going to be a lot lower than the probability of us getting ruined over a year because over a year we're exposed to a lot more risks and claims happening. But 
we can also decrease the probability of ruin by decreasing the total claims. And we can reduce the total claims by maybe tackling, tackling the severity. So this is the size of claims. And we can do that by maybe saying, we're not going to pay anything more than a specific limit for our, our benefits, or we might want to introduce a reinsurance scheme that then handles claims over a certain amount. We can also reduce total claims by tackling the other dimension of risk, which is frequency or the number of claims. And a way to do that very simply is to introduce an excess. But in all the previous videos, we've been talking about ways on how to, how to manage all of these risks. But what's lovely about ruin theory, and specifically this model, is that it'll show an insurance company how effective the various risk management mechanisms are, and we can actually quantify which one is the best, which, will, which we can then use in our cost-benefit analysis. Of course, ruin theory does get a little bit more complicated. Uh, like, for instance, let's talk about premium security loading. So remember, we had the whole idea of our capital, where C is the premiums. However, one idea is that our premiums should be linked to the total claims and a loading factor. So instead of C just being a you know, random number that we came up with, um, it should be given to the following formula, where lambda is gonna be the frequency of claims, M1 is the severity of the claims, and this theta is going to be the loading factor. Now, what if this loading factor is too high? Well, then people are gonna rather buy insurance from our competitors. What if this loading factor is too low? Well, then the risk of ruin is increased. But it's this whole idea that the premium should be connected to the risk, kind of like the risk premium plus an additional little bit so that you know this loading factor can allow for unexpected things so that the uh, company and the insurance uh, firm is protected from, from ruin. But again, it can get even more tricky with the mathematics, especially when we're looking in continuous time with infinite duration. Like I said, maths gets a bit tricky. Um, and here, the best that we can do is just provide an upper bound for the probability of ultimate ruin. Uh, we use something called Lundberg's inequality and something known as the adjustment coefficient R. And this is an inverse measure of risk. And essentially, the higher the value of R, the lower the upper bound on the ultimate probability of ruin. Now, for a compound Poisson process with parameter lambda, then R is the unique positive root of the following equation. Where here, lambda is the Poisson parameter, which we just mentioned. C is the premium rate per unit of time. Of course, you can even extend this by having that loading factor on top of it as well. And MXR is the moment generating function of the individual claim amount at point R. And then it will be possible to derive the upper and lower bounds for R. And of course, this model can be extended even further to include the reinsurance impact on ruin. Now look, this video has been focusing primarily on the theory. I just wanted to give you a very broad overview. What you do need to do is a lot of past papers. Now currently you will find ruin theory uh, exam questions in the CM2 exam. They used to be in the CT6 exam. So if you want to find more um, you know, past papers to do, more practice questions, go to CT6. In fact, back in my day when I used to write the CT6, the old exams, Everything relating to loss distributions and insurance used to be in CT6. Now they've put part of it in CS2 and part of it in CM2. It's a little bit of a mess. They're probably going to change that in the, in the future. Um, but yeah, I will make a video soon on a typical past paper question. And also for those of you who are looking at this and being like, oh, maybe I can apply this in practice. Just remember that this is also mainly a very theoretical model because in reality, there is a claim delay that ruin theory models don't necessarily account for. In fact, to handle that delays, you need something else known as runoff triangles, which we will also discuss at a later stage. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you soon for another one. Cheers.